Before you buy your first filament or your next one, stop. There's a 90% chance that you're overcomplicating your choice and I'll prove it. Let's break it down. PLA, ABS, PETG, and TPU. Four names, but do you really need them all? PLA is your go-to filament. It prints smoothly, doesn't work much, and works well for most projects, believe me. One of its greatest advantages is its wide range of printing temperatures. Depending on the printer, you can print PLA at temperatures as low as 190 degrees and as high as 220 degrees Celsius. If you're using a high-speed printer with clipper firmware, you might even push it to 230 or even 235 degrees Celsius especially for silk filaments that require more heat to flow properly. PLA is also one of the easiest filaments to cool. Unlike other materials that require specific cooling strategies, PLA benefits from as much cooling as possible. So the more fans, the better. Rapid cooling helps it maintain sharp details and reduces the chances of print defects. Another advantage of PLA is that while 3D printing materials are affected by humidity, PLA is not as hygroscopic as other filaments. This means that it absorbs moisture, but not as aggressively as materials like the PETG or TPU, making it easier to store and work in varying climates. Even though some people assume switching to a stronger filament will make their prints more durable, in reality, adjusting slicer settings is often way more effective. By increasing wall count, infill density, and print temperatures, you can significantly improve PLA strength, while still enjoying all the benefits of being really easy to use. But now let's talk about the one that every engineer swear it's the best filament, ABS. ABS can be a pain to print, but for heat resistant parts, it's worth the effort. This filament generally prints between 235 degrees Celsius and 255 degrees Celsius, depending on the printer and enclosure. A heated bed is a must, and it's typically set between 100 degrees Celsius and 110 degrees Celsius. Since ABS is highly susceptible to warping due to temperature fluctuations, an enclosed printer is highly recommended to maintain a consistent environment. If your printing space has frequent temperature changes or airflow, you might experience that layer separations or cracks in your prints. To improve the strength of ABS prints, using at least three to five perimeters is recommended. This helps compensate for the material's natural tendency to shrink. Proper bed addition is also critical, and in my personal opinion, ABS prints best on a PEI sheet. But if you have a well-maintained, a well-cleaned glass, or even some sort of addition like ABS slurry, it also works really well. But here's something that makes every printing easier having the right models. To find high quality, print ready models is half of the battle. SCL Flix has a massive library of optimized 3D models for 3D printing, saving your time and effort while ensuring better prints. And more than that, subscribers also have filament discounts, so make sure to check that out. Moving on to the next one, PETG. PETG is a fantastic middle ground between PLA and ABS. It offers better impact resistance without requiring an enclosure. The typical printing temperature for a PETG ranges from 225 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius. Unlike PLA, PETG should never be cooled at 100%. Instead, cooling should be set between 30% and 50%, with 100% cooling only for bridging sections. PETG has a higher viscosity than PLA, which means that stringing can be an issue. Adjusting retraction settings and using techniques like wipe nozzle can help minimize woozy. When tuned correctly, PETG prints are strong, slightly flexible, and perfect for outdoor applications. Now, let's talk about the most unique of them all, and also one that a lot of people have a lot of curiosity to try it out, TPU. If you need flexibility, TPU is your filament. However, printing with TPU requires careful attention to settings. Depending on the brand, the ideal nozzle temperature ranges from 210 degrees Celsius to 235 degrees Celsius. The heated bed should be around 70 degrees Celsius for optimal addition. One of the biggest challenges with TPU is speed. Printing too fast can cause filament jams, and especially if you're using a Bolden style extruder. The flexibility of TPU also varies based on shore hardness. If you're using a softer TPU, reducing speed and fine tuning retraction settings is crucial to prevent clogging. The direct drive extruders works best for TPU because they provide more control over the filament feeding. Whether you're printing phone cases, rubber seals, or flexible hinges, TPU can handle it all with the right setup. At this point, you might be thinking that 3D printing can be overwhelming at first, but learning the right techniques makes all the difference. That's where STL Academy comes in. Whether you're a complete beginner or looking to master advanced techniques, STL Academy gives you the knowledge you need to level up your printing skills 
or if you wish to become an entrepreneur, we also have courses dedicated to that. So check that out. This video is part of our Beginner's Guide to 3D Printing in 2025. So if you're starting it out, make sure to check the next videos that we'll be putting in this series. And if you made it this far, congratulations, you're in the right path to create incredible prints. No matter what filament you choose, understanding its strengths and best practices will help you to have very good results. Remember, start smart, master PLA first, with the right slicer setting and a little practice, you can make PLA work for almost anything. As you gain more confidence, you can experiment with ABS, PTG, and even TPU. And if you want to keep improving, don't forget to check SL Academy for expert guidance and SL Flix for high quality models and filament discounts. And if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Happy printing, and I'll see you in the next episode.